My name is Mark Titchener. I'm an artist based in London in the United Kingdom and I'm in the Artist in Resonance uh, studio at the AGO where I've been working now for just under two months. The residency has allowed me to focus on making a lot of work at the same time which has technical kind of issues but it's kind of interesting because the, the works feed each other and they kind of ideas bounce between them and sometimes things which didn't quite fit into one project roll over into the other so I think it's allowed a certain kind of working intensity. Mark Titchener's work, he works across a variety of disciplines, uh, often using text and working with these sort of statements that become truisms in an ironic way. And that's what he's doing here in Toronto as part of the Artists in Residence is he's worked with our city motto, diversity our strength. And that's part of what he's playing with in the community gallery, as well as working with some other text and video. My background is, I suppose, coming from a kind of fine art context. It just happens that I'm in the place that my work is most effective, or a kind, an element of my work is most effective, is, is outside on the streets. When I work with text, basically what I try to do is to take a kind of larger idea or issue and then sort of take it down into kind of like the smallest kind of soundbite that I possibly can. I mean, sometimes these um, issues are amb ambiguous. It's that, that's really the challenge is to find, to try and reduce that complex idea to something which it, when someone reads it, they can kind of absorb straight away, but also to kind of keep some of that ambiguity. One of the strange things about my work is that I quite often, people talk about the work being about aspirational text or belief. And the strange thing is, is the work actually comes from kind of the opposite point of view. It comes from a point of view which is to do with lack of belief or lack of meaning. So I try and actually depict is a sort of slight kind of emptiness or kind of, so that the phrases themselves kind of don't really mean anything without kind of any form of action. They're a suggestion, but they're kind of like just left there dangling and they kind of require the, the individual, the viewer, to kind of activate them. I want something which doesn't, it kind of looks a bit like advertising, or it looks a bit like something, but it actually doesn't really fit one thing or another. Um, like I say, it's this, this idea of sort of something being displaced or dissonant is, 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 is quite important. I mean, the single biggest kind of element of the work is the text and that kind of normally drives, drives everything and when I work on that I have a few really simple rules which is basically even if an idea is really complicated I try and use language which pretty much anyone can understand. So if I can reduce it down to four words or two words or one word I, I will do but within that I have to keep some of the ambigu ambiguity of, of perhaps the issue. So sometimes words kind of scan, like as a bit reading one way, but it becomes, so it becomes really important, like every, every sort of word has to be really kind of refined. One of the things that I think is great about working with Mark is that he's been such a generous mentor for the youth that have been involved in the project. So working with our youth council, working with youth from an alternative school called Oasis Skateboard Factory, together, um, you know, he's been able to create both the installation in the community gallery in Toronto now, as well as the installation that's going up in Yorkville through a collaborative process that allows the youth participants to really feel that they're integrated in the decision making and the creation. Working with groups here was a way of like, kind of get gathering information and also getting um, a, a certain kind of perspective on the city and, and, and really kind of running with, um, you know, letting them kind of guide me a little bit. First, 
thing we do is something like this actually from the youth council is we draw a map and on the, the map goes the places which are important to that group. So it becomes about mapping the city, not from a tourist point of view, but from the point of view of kind of like emotional interest. Like we went to local parks, graffiti alleys, and like took photos of street art, like the Toronto scene. He's inspired them to really feel like they have ownership over the project as well, uh, that they're true collaborators on this project. I think also um, Mark has really encouraged them to think about the, their own art making and how some of the things that we've talked about can influence their own art making. But actually going through the process of doing all this and working on the murals and the concepts behind his work, it really changed my opinion on typography and how I can apply that to my own artwork. Not every artist is able to really pull off large-scale work and do it in a collaborative way with a bunch of strangers who, you know, he really just met when coming to Canada. So that, that's quite a skill. Part of the working process with them has actually been to do with how you go about making something. So it's been kind of much more hands-on, so we've kind of been actually painting and masking and they've been seeing a little bit of actually the really important thing, how long things take and, um, you know, the, how to start with nothing and end up with, you know, and take a design and to realize that. Man, Mark was, he's a pretty funny guy. He had some pretty good jokes, man. He had some excellent ideas. I tried to help out with a few ideas. He took them, he changed them, made them 10 times better. Man, the backgrounds of our photos, tomorrow should be ours. It's like random stuff. And he put all that random stuff and made it look amazing within like 10 minutes in our classroom. It's really gotten us, given them a chance to work with an artist, but also to really think about their city in a really different way. There's been, you know, talking about urban change. So, and, and also explaining some of that terminology that people hear, words like gentrification all the time, and what that actually means, and kind of showing them, like, examples, historical examples in the city. So, you know, look, we've, when we were sourcing uh, background material for the posters, we um, were looking, you know, like at some historical areas and how they've changed, like images through the 20th century of particular areas. Um, and, and I suppose really driving home that idea of the city as being a kind of non-static, evolving place. I go and I see Tomorrow Should Be Ours, I see like a revolution of like street art and a revolution of youth who have something to say that tomorrow should be theirs and not like big corporations, you know. We've been messing around with this, with the, the city slogan or the city motto, diversity, our strength, as a kind of mantra. And um, so we've been working on a series of four murals based on that text. And then um, a, a further work, which isn't quite finished, which is an audio work, which is based on them kind of like um, saying these words, but like in different kind of pitches and tones and with different kind of like emotions. And so I suppose with that, on one level we would, talking about ideas of how a city, I suppose, brands itself, how, and how, how being a part or a resident of the city, that then reflects on you. Toronto is, it's the city of diversity. I really do believe in the motto, diversity or strength, because that is my, like, that's my personal strength. What I try to do is actually just a reflection of how I feel about things and that's just a general sense of kind of like doubt or longing and looking for meaning and that's I suppose that's always the gap in the work between what the work actually is and what it potentially represents that's kind of what I'm interested in really is that whole that kind of lack of lack of meaning or lack of belief and how you fill it with stuff <laughs> you fill it with ideas and like possessions. Um, that piece on the outside of the door is probably as close as a motto as I have, which is that the world isn't working. <laughs> I'm definitely very thankful to Mark for being that sort of mentor to the youth participants in the project and being able to, uh, to take that on and be ins inspirational in the way that he has been. So I think all of it is really going to have us thinking about ourselves and our city in a different way.